during my year-long hiatus, I went through a lot of my older uploads and noticed that I have made mention of Sonic R in a healthy number of times on this channel. Sonic's stupid now. They just don't make them like Sonic R anymore. But how about that music, huh? best Sonic Racing related title. Not that I had that much competition to begin with, because I mean... Clearly there's something I've been dying to say about this game. Or at least, I think. I don't know. I'm actually a little concerned how much has been mentioned in my videos. So you know what? Fuck it. I think it's about time I let it all out of my system. Just for you guys, here's a big old video about all things Sonic R. A video Patreon supported by people such as Abby Knutson, Amanda Guth, and Praetorium Mars. Thank you. Now let's do this shit. So, I could do what everyone else has already done and just do a whole video shitting on how broken this game is or whatever, and while I think that's funny in its own right, I'd rather give this game an honest look start to finish. Sonic R is an odd but unique game, and I think it's about time we take an in-depth perspective on it. On that note, what better place to start than the game's inception? Initially, Sonic R was not supposed to be a Sonic game. In fact, the game, at least in the way we know it today, wasn't supposed to exist whatsoever. Traveler's Tales, the people behind Sonic 3D Blast, were working on a Formula 1 game for the Sega Saturn in order to compete with the extremely popular Formula 1 game released for the PlayStation in 1996. However, they were approached by Sega to adapt the racing game they had been working on into a Sonic game. See, what happened was another Sonic game planned for the Sega Saturn known as Sonic Extreme was basically going through development hell for a few years by that point. Due to the difficulty of programming for the Saturn, members of the team being fired, and a number of other issues, Sonic Extreme was cancelled in early 97. With Sonic Extreme cancelled, and with the Saturn being a bit of a failure as it was, Sega was in real need of a Sonic game to fill the gap in for the holidays. Which is why it was decided the work Traveler's Tales had done for Formula 1 at that point would be repurposed into a Sonic game. The project was overseen by Sonic Team, also contributing some of the assets such as the models, though Traveler's Tales did most of the heavy lifting, namely all the programming. Sega made the decision to appoint Traveler's Tales specifically because they were impressed with the team's work on games like Toy Story for Genesis and of course Sonic 3D Blast. Say what you will about the actual quality of the games they worked on, it was evident they do their sh** when it came to Sega hardware, arguably even better than Sega themselves. Sega's own Daytona USA was notorious for having very bad pop-up that was harshly criticized even at the time, whereas Traveler's Tales made an engine for Sonic R so polygons would seemingly fade in as you got closer. Again, they knew their sh**. That technique specifically, which was referred to as 12 layers transparency, alongside the presentation of the final product itself, were highly praised at the time of its release. No, I'm not joking. People are always cracking jokes about the game's visuals, but if magazines from 1997 are anything to go by, Sonic R was seen as a very impressive looking sour game. Even during the game's early days of development, people were already praising the visuals. Quote, Graphically, Sonic R already looks fantastic. With detailed courses, clean textures, and amazing 12 layer transparency engine which cleverly disguises pop-up. Another magazine even went as far as to say, Sonic the Hedgehog returns in a stunning new racing title, which takes Saturn visuals way past PlayStation performance. <laughs> Damn. Needless to say, Traveler's Tales had done it. They had converted their Formula 1 racing game into a Sonic game within that year, and just in time for the holidays. But how did the game itself turn out? Well, in stark contrast to what is said about Sonic R these days, upon release, Sonic R was actually met with decently favorable reviews. I'm serious. Computers and Video Games Magazine listed it as their number one Sega Saturn game and rewarded it with a 4 out of 5. The official Sega Saturn magazine was especially generous, giving it a 93% out of 100, saying, another incredible addition to the phenomenal Sonic series. Jaw-dropping graphics and classic Sonic Team gameplay combined to produce one of the best Saturn titles to date. But all of that is what people were saying then. How's it hold up now? Well, for shits and giggles, let's start with the story. Because fuck it, I love talking about game narratives and games that absolutely don't need one. And for the record, what I'm about to read you is coming straight from the official manual from this game. <clears throat> Sonic and Tails are enjoying a little time off of adventuring. The trip they planned will be a nice, relaxing vacation. Or so they think. Tails spots a huge sign alongside the road they are currently traveling on. It is a recruiting advertisement for the World Grand Prix. Tails says, Sonic! Sonic, look! There's gonna be a huge race of all the best racers in the world! What a great opportunity to show your speed and compete with all the great racers! Sonic thinks for a moment. He is the world's fastest runner, but participating in a race is not really his interest. Something on the sign, however, catches Sonic's eye. Dr. Robotnik, Sonic's arch enemy, is participating in the race. Sonic races off to the distance. Wait, Sonic! Wait for me! Tails shouts to his friend. Aww. Stay close to me, my love. Miles above the sign, a spy satellite focuses on Sonic and Tails. Dr. Robotnik snickers in delight, saying, Now that you have fallen to my trap, Sonic, I will finally have the Chaos Emeralds and beat you at the same time with my new hover machine and these robots. 
Dr. Robotnik then looks to his left, and a row of gleaming eyes looks back at him. Nothing can go wrong! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Little does Sonic know that Dr. Robotnik has learned the location of the Chaos Emeralds. But Sonic is not the only one who will be racing up Dr. Robotnik. Sonic's rival, Knuckles, has learned that Sonic will be participating in this very important race. Knuckles never turns down a chance to be around Sonic when the action starts. Wait, what the fuck? Amy will be there too. After secretly overhearing Dr. Robotnik's plans, she will also be racing to find the Chaos Emeralds. And scene. Okay, so let's digest this for a sec. So there's a sign advertising some huge race. Sonic is like, nah. But then he finds out his arch nemesis is behind it. And then he's like, okay, that sounds good to me. Wouldn't the fact that Eggman is involved be more of a reason to stay away? And furthermore, why did Robotnik plan this race anyway? If he knows the location of the Emerald, why the fuck would he invite Sonic over to their location instead of getting them himself? How is this plan supposed to work? Knowing the location of the Emerald aside, how is beating Sonic at a race going to help in any regard. In a previous video, I poked fun at the story for Sonic Riders for likewise being idiotic. But for fuck's sake, as dumb as that was, you can at least understand the premise. Meanwhile, Sonic are over here. <laughs> I have located the Chaos Emeralds. I must retrieve them before Sonic. Therefore, my best line of action is invite him into a race so we may circle the track and potentially spot an emerald or two. Nothing can possibly go wrong. <laughs> what? Anyways, the story really has no bearing on the actual quality of the game. In fact, it's not even mentioned outside of the manual. But I thought it was hilarious and I knew I needed to share that with all of you. So with that out of the way, I think it's fair to start talking about what I used to think about Sonic R. Simply put, as a very young and naive boy, I thought Sonic R was awesome. And we're talking real young. Like I think the first time I played this game was when I was like 7 or 8. I remember going over to my friend's house and he had the game on his PC. And let me tell you, we would play this game until the break of dawn. Okay, not really. We'd play for about an hour until one of us was like, hey! And then we'd ride our scooters until the break of dawn. Either way, being able to control Sonic and friends in a 3D environment was really exciting. I grew up with the third and fourth generation of consoles, so being able to play any sort of game in a 3D world was always a privilege. I also remember specifically being impressed with all the different characters you had access to. This is both a strength and a weakness, as we'll get into later. But as a kid, seeing so many different characters that all played extremely different was really interesting. This wasn't like Mario Kart where picking a character really just meant the difference between speed and acceleration. In Sonic R, there are 10 characters including Super Sonic, and they all have their own different traits. For example, as Tails you can fly for a short time, Robotnik can shoot missiles at leading players, and Amy is bad. Alright, fine, let's go over all of them in detail. First of all, I should mention there's a pseudo tier system in play here. What I mean by that is that the 10 characters are split into two different groups. The first group, which we'll just call B tier, consisting of Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Eggman, and Amy. In the second tier, A tier, Metal Sonic, Metal Knuckles, Tails Doll, Egg Robo, and Super Sonic. If you were to choose Tails, for example, you would be put up against all the characters in the B tier. Likewise, if you were to choose Metal Sonic, you would be put up against all the characters in the A tier. That is, unless you haven't unlocked everyone. In which case, there'll be a mess of characters from both tiers. And that makes a whole lot of sense, right? I'm playing as Metal Sonic, racing against Sonic and Super Sonic. Someone f***ed up. Sonic is the fastest of all the starting characters, and you'd think he'd be an all-round character, but he's actually one of the hardest to control in the game. Tails is a bit slower, but also better for a first-time player for that very reason. He's easier to maneuver, and can even fly for a short while. Knuckles is just as maneuverable as Tails, and has a signature glide. Amy is pretty slow, but she is one of the only three characters that will indefinitely float over water. She also has a speed boost that will greatly increase her top speed for a small amount of time, at the cost of reduced steering. Robotnik might actually be worse than Amy. He's just about as slow and won't fall in water much like Amy, but instead of a speed boost, ability. He can shoot a missile at the cost of 10 rings, which sounds like a pretty cool ability, but in practice it might be the worst projectile attack I've ever seen in a video game. Not only do the missiles rarely hit their mark, but they're practically useless. Look at that. I hit Knuckles square in the ass at point blank range and all that happens is it gets a little startled. It pretty much exclusively acts as a button you press if you feel like having 10 less rings for whatever reason. In the A tier, we have Metal Sonic, who is not only faster than the real Sonic, but he can even skip across water if he keeps jumping upon landing. Tails Doll, who is not only responsible for a bazillion creepypastas, but can it definitely float over water, and has a float ability opposed to a standard jump. Metal Knuckles, who is not only fast, but can water skip just like Metal Sonic, and still retains the original Knuckles glide. A Grobo, who is probably the worst character in the game. He's not that fast, he can't jump, he won't stay above water like Eggman does, and somehow his gun is even worse than Eggman's missiles. Whereas I managed to secure a few hits with Robotnik, I shot countless times as A Grobo over multiple races, and only managed to hit a character once. So yeah, don't pick A Grobo. And finally, there's Super Sonic, who is straight up broken. Once you unlock 
block him. Don't expect to win any races if you're up against him. He can run on water. He has insane acceleration. He has a triple jump and he's stupidly fast to boot. In fact, he's so fast. The replay cam can barely keep up with him. I feel this might be as good of a transition as any to start talking about what I think about the game today. I still think the game is fun to play, but it's no secret Sonic R has some severe shortcomings. First of which, these characters are stupidly unbalanced. In fact, the character roster in Sonic R is so unbalanced, it makes Meta Knight from Brawl look like a reasonable character. If you play a two-player game with someone who's even halfway competent at video games, you will never win against Super Sonic if you choose Amy, Robotnik, or Egg Robo. Just the fact that they had to split these characters up into their own separate tier list should have been an early indicator that this this is not okay. I think Super Sonic is a cool little bonus for collecting all the Chaos Emeralds, but the fact that the game would humorously pick you up against him when you decide to choose any of the A tier characters and expect you to somehow win is laughable. Like for real. If Sonic R had an official tier list, it probably looks something like this. The imbalanced nature of the roster makes the game enjoyable enough when you're playing on your own, but not at all viable as a remotely fair racing game. Either way, 10 characters all with unique playstyles is a huge perk. The total stage count of 5 on the other hand is not. And yes, you heard that correct. Sonic R is a mascot racer with only 5 tracks. To their credit, with the exception of Radiant Emerald, the tracks presented here have a fair level of complexity. Multiple routes, shortcuts, there's a lot going on here. Maybe a little too much in fact. If there's one thing even more unbalanced in the characters, it's the track routes themselves. When it comes to multiple routes in a racing game, it's expected both will have their pros and cons. But in general, they will take a similar amount of time to maneuver. This how however, is not the case of Sonic R. This is showcased as early as the very first level, Resort Island. Here's a top-down render of it. Just look at this! Why the hell would you take this narrow winding path when you're inevitably gonna get stuck on the walls, when you could just effortlessly jump to the left and simply run forward? You can choose to take this short path right here, or take the longer way all the way around the mountain. And what the f*** is this? Why the hell would you ever choose a detour all the way out there when the first turn is right here? Sonic R is brutally unfair forgiving to newcomers that simply want to race. It wasn't all for naught though. There is a very specific reason the courses are designed this way. In Sonic R's most unique and defining feature, every level is riddled with collectibles, scattered and sometimes easy, but most of the time obscure locations. It excuses the weird layouts in the context of a single player experience. But as a racer, which Sonic R is, after all, the team's priorities were questionable to say the least. It was likely a decision of Sonic Team and not Traveler's Tales if I had a guess. Nevertheless, here's how it works. All stages contain emeralds and five gold tokens. That is, all but Radiant Emerald, which contains neither. If you can manage to collect all five tokens during a race and place third or higher, you will then be put up against one of the unlockable racers. If you can manage to beat said racer, you will unlock them. As for the emeralds, they will generally be harder to find than the tokens, and you will only secure them if you can place first. Otherwise... <laughs> Once you collect all seven emeralds throughout the stages, you will unlock the game-breaking mess himself, Super Sonic. If you choose to unlock him first before unlocking the other characters for the tokens, the process of collecting the tokens and beating their respective unlockable becomes a total cakewalk because, as previously established, no one really stands a chance against Super Sonic. The method of unlocking the characters I think is genuinely fun. It only takes about half an hour to unlock it all, but this, more so than anything else, is where the enjoyment of Sonic R is derived from. Much to Sonic R's own benefit, or detriment depending on how you look at it. The entirety of the game is seemingly designed around the task of unlocking everything. This is good, because as mentioned, trying to unlock all these characters and messing around with what you've unlocked is a lot of fun. Conversely, this is also a bad thing, because as a racing game, many of Sonic R's flaws come from this design philosophy. Going off the beaten path to deposit 50 rings into a door so you collect an emerald that pops out of a submarine, wait what the hell did I just say, is a really neat way to hide a collectible for sure. But once you have collected that emerald, there is no logical reason to go out here and blow 50 rings on a door that isn't even blocking anything. Or going back to Resort Island, you would think this 50 ring door would provide a nice shortcut to players who manage to collect 50 rings. But in reality, despite this route being off the main path and requiring rings, it takes longer to go this way. The reason this is even here is to hide an emerald. I don't mind there being collectibles scattered throughout the levels in inconvenient locations. In fact, I think it's a novel concept, but when you decide to design the entire track around these collectibles is when the problem arises. I would say a whopping 70% of the track only exists because of the inclusion of the collectibles, when it really should have been the other way around. Making a good level that makes sense as a racetrack should have been the priority. Only once the layout was finalized, should the collectibles should have been considered. If you're just trying to win a race, so much of the track goes unused because it just isn't practical. When playing a racing game, if you're trying to figure out which routes are a waste of time and which ones you should genuinely 
really take. I think there's an inherent problem with the track design because there should never be a route purely designed to waste your time. Every route should have its pros and cons. Generally, that means the easier routes being longer and the more difficult one taking less time. Cleaning up these stages would also help the minimap. I mean, look at this mess. How is this supposed to help anyone out? Some of these routes don't even make sense from a minimap perspective. Like what the hell is this route right here? The inferred route you're gonna take if you're skipping across the water? For fuck's sake, that shouldn't be a part of the minimap. That's like taking a Mario Kart minimap and drawing an additional line anytime you could theoretically use a mushroom to cut through the grass. Whew. Jesus Christ, that was quite the tangent I went on. I almost forgot to talk about the arguably most controversial part of Sonic R, the music. Composed by Richard Jacks and sung by British singer Teresa Jane Davis. The music in Sonic R has been a point of debate ever since its release. Some people love it, while others question what this sort of music is doing in a Sonic game. A lot of the contention is directed at the vocals. Needless to say, they're pretty silly. And I don't think many people would question the compositions themselves if it wasn't for their inclusion. What do I think? Well, first of all, they can be turned off in the options menu, so I don't think it's worth getting worked up over. But you know what? Prepare your keyboards, because I actually kind of love the soundtrack to Sonic R. It's insanely catchy. Does it really belong? Probably not. But after after playing the game with them, I couldn't imagine racing through these tracks while listening to anything else. These songs are just great. So, we've talked about the characters, the courses, the music, and now I want to round this video off of how Sonic R could be improved if Sega for whatever reason takes another stab at it. Without further ado, here's a list of changes I believe would make Sonic R a better game. Change number one, balance out the abilities of the characters. Every character should have a more or less equal shot at winning a race. At the very least, there especially shouldn't be such a gap between them that even the game separates them into two groups when you play. Robotnik and Negroba's weapon should have a much greater impact alongside greater accuracy. Amy, especially since she cannot jump, should be faster and should turn tighter. Metal Sonic's ability to skip across water is already pretty OP as it is, so he should be made much slower for lower jump. Same with Metal Knuckles, slightly slower and difficult to control. As for Agrobo, if he has legs, then I see no reason why he shouldn't have a jump. Change number two, rework the controls. I think one of the biggest issues of how these characters control is how slowly they turn, which is why they have often been compared to tanks by many people, with the exception of racers with higher than average speed. Controls should have a much tighter feel of sharper cornering, because parts like these hairpin turns or regular ruins are unbelievably clumsy of the current controls. Of course, the less than adequate controls might not even be as noticeable, was it not for the? Change number three, track designs. The tracks do not at all complement the controls of the racers. Considering how loosely Sonic and friends control, tracks should be made much wider of softer turns. And if there should be a hairpin turn, there should be plenty of anticipation leading up to it. And it shouldn't be preceded by two more hairpins! I know I spent a while talking about the designs themselves having a surplus of inefficient routes, but even those would be forgivable if they were easier to navigate. And finally, change number four. There needs to be more than five tracks. I understand Sonic R was made under a strict time frame, and how much Traveler's Tales were able to manage is commendable in its own right. But I think I thought of a sneaky trick they could have used to expand the five stages into at least nine. So please excuse the shoddy photoshops I did. I I just made these to explain my angle. So as discussed, the stages are probably a little too dense and complicated for their own good. They're taxing on newcomers and make the minimap look like some kind of three-year-old's connected dots drawing. So to minimize work, what if we took a single track and turned it into two separate tracks? As you see here, I've taken a render of Resort Island and have edited the areas into two alterations. This first edit removes a beach to the left that trivializes this type halfway, making it more viable alongside making the intended route more understood. Then I've removed the collection of islands you logically wouldn't travel to in a standard race. And then in this last junction, we're where one route is clearly shorter than the other. I've removed the longer route and only left the shorter one. For the second edit, the tight passageway has been completely removed and in its place is now a wall. Alternatively, I've left the beach making it the route that you must take now. Up here, I've also turned that nonsensical route you wouldn't normally take into the only route. Finally, back at this last junction, the longer route is now the path you must take. As some final additions, you may have noticed I made one edit look like it was taking place during night and the other during sunset. Well, in the options menu for Sonic R and PC, there are actually weather settings. The time of day will change in addition to there being either rain or snow, instead of having this be a toggle in the options. Having the two alterations having different lighting information would go a long way making the two edits feel different. As a final touch, Sonic R has a reverse mode in the time trial options. Having slight differences in the layout, different lighting, and having to traverse the level in the opposite direction would all add together to great effect and sincerely make these simple edits feel like two completely different stages and it wouldn't even take that much work to boot i'm sure most people would catch on but having alternate versions of resort island radical city regal ruins and reactive factory to make for a total of nine stages would look a hell of a lot better than the current five that they have even if they were similar as an extra bonus with that number of stages you could turn the grand prix mode into an actual grand prix sonic riders did something similar where they had two grand prix one of five tracks and the other of those same five tracks
tracks but heavily altered. Why not do that with Sonic R? Have a Grand Prix for each set of alterations. Once you complete both, you could unlock Radiant Emerald as a special bonus track. And that's it! Oh man. Is this proof that I subconsciously have been dying to talk about Sonic R? Because holy sh**, this is one of the longest videos I've ever made. I really enjoy this game. Honestly. I know I spent a good deal of this video ragging on it, but it genuinely comes from a place of admiration. I love this game growing up, and while I absolutely recognize its many faults as an adult, I still have a soft spot for it. I totally understand why it receives the terrible rep it has, but at the same time, I think Sonic R is a lot more fascinating than it is bad. Is it a mess? I mean, sure, but that doesn't change the fact that anytime I pick up this game, no matter how old I get, I always have a fantastic time. For something so bad, Sonic R is one of the most charming games of all time, and you can bet your ass I'll be playing it again sometime in the near future. Hey, thank you so much for watching! I'd like to give a shout out to some of my Patreons, such as The Basement Dweller, Amanda Guth, Rami Batter, Q, Pretoria Mars, Cashinator, and Abby Knudsen. Thank you all so much. And if you're a Patreon, Alpha version 1.1 of my game should be out by the time this video uploads, so make sure to check that out if you like. For everyone else, there will be links to my Twitter, Patreon, and Facebook down below. Again, thank you all for watching, and until next time, have a good one.